Dr. Hooker, you're you're advocating for a critical consciousness that's faith informed, mm -hmm. but then the next thing you want to say is that it's community focused. Yes. Now we live in such a hyper individualized times mm -hmm. where a fair number of folks want to see a guru, read a book, and then go be by themselves mm -hmm. instead of this messy process of community. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's that, they're not going to get off the hook with you because you, you want to stress community focus. Tell, tell me why you think community focus is required for the critical consciousness you aspire to, mm -hmm. and then how you do it. We exist. I am because you are. There's the, the Ubuntu notion of our existence. My identity is completely locked up in the, in the critical institutions that socialize me into my being, which means that I only can understand myself in relationship to what has gone before me, what is above me. And so as an individual, we have a nested theory. Individuals exist within families, which exist within communities, which exist within nations and internationally. And, if, and that happens over time as well. And so my critical consciousness, because more so than being individualistic, we're also particularly ahistorical. And so we can't know how we've come to be and how those around us have come to be if we don't understand kind of the mix of history and the experiential nature of all of those around us who also informs who we are. And so our own identity and the identity of everyone else is formed in and understood in relationship to community. Now how do you do that. I mean, there are some practices that churches are all already really good at allowing youth to engage with elders, allowing youth to mentor even younger groups so they can notice kind of the different stages of life and how you engage along different stages of life. But then how are our communities set up? And I like to go back again to one of the important sacraments of the church, which is this table. How is it that we've created community? Are there any ways if we do a walk around in our building, are there ways in which certain parts of the building invite some and exclude others? What does that mean? We might take the youth out for a meal at a restaurant. You always want to go right around closing time so that you'll know that the restaurant is closed and the sign that they see, because they're sitting inside, says open. And then we invite them to understand what does it mean because everybody outside sees the other side of the sign, which is to say closed. And so then we ask for the level of reflection about what are the ways in which this community has constructed itself so that some are welcome and others are not. And how would we build just relationships, the righteousness, the right relationships that we believe God is calling us to in ways that open it for one another. So a lot of it is in just these small, uh, mundane exchanges and experiences where you get to notice uh, who gets left behind, who is allowed, who is called, who is uh, not validated in these experiences and expressions. And youth are actually particularly uh, attentive to that because belonging is so important to them. And so they know not only when they don't belong or when they feel like they don't belong, but when they do and one that they're close to does not. And so while they're in one of the most sensitive periods for the sense of belonging and identity, we want to capitalize on that to allow them to notice it, not just for comfort, but for justice.